Earlier this year, it was announced that John Legend sold his music catalog to private equity firm KKR and music recording company BMG, becoming the latest musician to cash out in an era of depressed concert sales. In doing so, Legend gave up his publishing rights and rights to receive future royalties for his music released to date. While not necessarily uncommon for a musician to cash out at the end of their career, at the age of only 43, John Legend is in his prime music composing age. Legend joined the likes of Bruce Springsteen, Bob Dylan, Shakira, and many, many others, all of which recently sold their music catalogs while still alive. And we're not talking about little numbers here. We're talking about hundreds of hundreds of millions of dollars going into these music catalogs. For example, Bob Dylan's catalog was just bought by Universal Music for an estimated three hundred million. And Bruce Springsteen sold his publishing catalog to Sony for a reported five hundred million, making it the largest catalog deal to date. With these kind of numbers, there's no wonder why musicians are cashing out while they're still alive. But what is driving up these catalog valuations and who are the key players? Well, to no one's surprise, investment firms and financial institutions have been throwing billions of dollars into the music catalog acquisition space. The inflow of capital is primarily driven from giant investment firms like KKR, Apollo Global Management, and Blackstone. One company has been leading the pack. A company called Primary Wave has been buying up artist music catalogs left and right. In the past year, they bought the rights to Prince, Bob Marley, Bing Crosby, James Brown, and several others. In an interview with Music Business Worldwide, the CEO of Primary Wave said, We have over $1 billion in buying power and a pipeline that matches our current reserves. The good news is that we are backed by some of the largest and smartest institutional investors in the world, including Oak Tree Capital. So resources have never been a problem. Outside of Primary Wave, investment firm Blackstone announced on October of 2021 that they are in talks to give former Beyonce manager Merck Mercuriatus new music fund Hypnosis approximately $1 billion to buy music catalogs. The fund has already spent about $1.5 billion to secure copyrights to more than 60,000 songs in the past three years, most recently with their announcement of a 50% stake in Neil Young's songwriting catalog. Blackstone, along with Primary Wave, Universal Music Group, Warner Music Group, and BMG are among the many, many firms bidding up the prices of these catalogs. In fact, multiples paid for the music catalogs in the past decade have nearly doubled. But why have so many investment firms entered this space? Well, it may be related to the introduction of streaming platforms like Spotify and others over the past several years. They have disrupted the traditional ways recorded music has made money. This has to do with the changing revenue landscape with streaming now making up more than 62% of global recorded music sales, cannibalizing the sales from physical copies like CDs and downloads. Now there are mixed views on streaming. Many artists have protested the change as they've seen declines in their revenues. Estimates for Spotify I claim that artists only receive around 0.005 cents per stream. So you need approximately 250 streams to get a single dollar. Apple Music, on the other hand, pays nearly double, at least according to an article by the Wall Street Journal. Which I don't know about you, but my Spotify rap claim I only listen to my top artists around 300 or so times for the entirety of 2021, which means that I barely made them a dollar for the whole year. It takes 20 million streams to make $100,000, of which the artists are likely only collecting 50,000. This is down tremendously to when artists sold physical copies. On the other side, music streaming revenues are expected to grow in the coming years with new subscriptions and companies competing for artist exclusivity. Investors have begun to realize this and view the introduction of streaming as a stable and consistent cash flow. According to the director of Music for Business at NYU, Larry Miller, in an article by Axios, claimed, music is now viewed as a highly resilient, uncorrelated asset class. From the investor standpoint, the life of a copyright is long and the volatility is low, especially when investing in a large music catalog. And the tide is rising, driven by streaming. In other words, this provides a return completely uncorrelated to the market and higher than traditional fixed income investments. The introduction of streaming has created recurring revenue streams for those that own them. In addition, they require nearly no capital to grow at high rates. They're often referred to as annuity-like with the lifetime revenue streams. Lastly, the new streaming landscape has caused more discovery for older artists. There's limited seasonality with this music and the streaming is less hit-driven than traditional music sales. No wonder there is demand. But why pay more for Bruce Springsteen as opposed to Shakira? Well, it has to do with the longevity of the artist in their albums. The longer the catalog has been producing royalty income, the more investors are willing to pay. 
Royalty Exchange created a chart that helps visualize this relationship. The longer the catalog has been earning royalties, the more perceived staying power it has, and therefore sells for a higher multiple. The bar represented in yellow are catalogs that are seven years or older. As you can see, they are selling for much higher multiples than their younger age peers. With the inflated multiples, it makes sense that artists are taking advantage. But why else have artists decided to cash out now? Of course, artists aren't earning as much money as they used to with the decline in concerts and event ticket sales. As we saw earlier, there's also somewhat of a decline in revenue paid out to artists through streaming. There's a lot of risk there with this changing music environment. Alternatively, they can sell their catalog and still keep their their image and likeness, as well as still produce music in the future that they have rights to. We have to remember that catalog sales are considered long-term holding periods, meaning one year or more. Therefore, they are taxed at the capital gains rate, which is significantly lower than the rate that they would have paid on income taxes. There are also some concerns related to increases in cap gains under the Biden administration. Recent proposals have bumped the cap gains tax rate for those making more than a million dollars from 20% to 39.6. May not seem like that big of a difference, but when these transactions are hundreds of millions of dollars for some of these artists, it's pretty significant. Applying the math to Springsteen, this represents 198 million in taxes, up from the estimated 100 million he'll pay under the current cap gains tax rate. Lastly, estate planning may also play a role. But what are some ways an average investor, and let's be honest, probably below average investor like myself, can invest in these trends? Well, you could go out and potentially buy Universal Music Group, a publicly traded company, which is currently hovering right above its 52 week low. Or maybe you could invest in the hypnosis fund that was mentioned previously. However, a more direct way to purchase royalties is from a site called Royalty Exchange, where you can buy and sell intellectual property. For example, an auction for Jay-Z's Empire State of Mind album just sold a percentage of its royalties for $190,500. Or maybe you could buy a portion of the royalties of this 90s R&B song list featured in sitcom Friends for around $50,000, which generates a little over 4K in income a year. Doesn't seem too bad. What's great about this site is that they supposedly manage all the paperwork and transfer the proceeds to your account so there's no hassle now there are a few other ways to invest in royalties out there but there's not too many and i found that the royalty exchange is the best marketplace to invest in these types of income streams who will be the next musician to sell and who could potentially break springsteen's record of 500 million only time will tell but i wouldn't doubt we're going to be seeing some new record-breaking catalog sales this year in 2022 please leave a comment with your thoughts on who might be the next musician thanks